to the book of St. Luke. Ever since that I've been down here, everything that I've preached has been confirmation from the Sunday school. Everything that I've preached has been confirmation from the Sunday school. And once you get confirmation from God, then you know that you're doing the right things in the right way. The book of St. Luke chapter 9. The book of St. Luke chapter 9. And we're going to begin reading at the 57th verse. We're going to give everybody an opportunity. The book of St. Luke chapter 9. I think on last week, thank Brother Little John talking about Dr. Jesus. Today we're going to be talking from Dr. Luke. Uh -huh. Amen. The book Amen. of Luke chapter 9 beginning at verse 57. And it says, Now what happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then he said to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Mm. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But you go and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but you let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. But Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Amen. Out of the verses that we read, if we're going to use the, the, the last verse 62 where it says, but Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Mm. So we're going to use for a subject today, don't let nothing turn you around. My God. Don't let nothing turn you around. If you go back and study the book of Luke chapter 9, you'll see where a lot of things happen in chapter 9 that we're truly familiar with. We're truly familiar with when Jesus fed the 5,000 and, and that part is in there and, and now Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem because Jesus knows that it's time for him to be arrested. Mm -hmm. Time for him to die and time for him to be raised again on the third day. So as he was on his way to Jerusalem, he had his disciples with him. And as we go through this Christian journey, guys, Bill, I want you to know that when you're on your way to do a particular job, you're going to get stopped along the way. But what Jesus is doing now is he's asking a question, are you truly ready for the journey that I have set before you? Mm -hmm. If you say that you are ready to follow Jesus, Jesus is just showing us the overview of some of the things that must happen if you're truly ready Amen. to follow Jesus. Yes. Right. Yes, God. He asked the first disciple, he said, uh, 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 I'll follow you, Jesus, wherever you go. Mm -hmm. Jesus told him that foxes and birds have homes and holes in the ground, but the Son of Man have nowhere to lay his head. Mm -hmm. So if you say that you're going to follow me wherever I go, whenever we get ready to go, don't think you're going to be staying in the Holiday Inn Express. <laughs> don't think that you're going to be staying in condominiums every night when you go with me when I go. Mm -hmm. So how is that telling me? Preacher, because if we go somewhere a long way off, then we're going to stay in the holiday in the I know we're not going to sleep in the car. When God sends you on a journey, mm -hmm. the flesh tells us that that's where we're going to stay. But God might put you in a situation where you have to stay somewhere that you don't want to be. So when God told us that the birds have nests, and the fox have holes in the ground. But when you are following me, you're not going to ask that I always have somewhere to stay. Yes. But your job is to follow me. I get to do the instructions that I have 
given you to do. Yes. The next guy came on where the next disciple, the Bible tells me to someone, he said, Jesus, I'll follow you, but give me time to bury my father. Now, what we have to understand in this part of the scripture is that the, 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 the person's father was not dead. But what he is telling us here is that whenever my father dies because he's getting older, I want to be here to bury him. We know that all of us love our families, and we'll do a lot of things for our families. But if we're going to follow Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. we're going to have to go and do things that we might not want to do. Yes. There are going to be family members at home that's going to say, I need your help now. But Jesus is telling you that I need you to go down to Jonesville because there's somebody aching, and I need you to minister to them. Amen. Mm. Tell you better remember, I'll be back. Mm. Because I can, just by me being here, it's not going to determine whether you're going to live or whether you're going to die. Right. Yeah. But I want to be there. I want you to be here with me when I go just in case. God put a criteria out there. Yes. If you're going to follow me, you have to ask the flesh to move out of the way. Because you are going for me in the spirit. Yes. It sounds kind of harsh, preacher, but that's what God's word says. We go in the flesh and we have our ways and sometimes we get sentimental, but if we're going to follow God, mm -hmm. we have to follow God's rules. Yes. And God's rules say we're not going to just concentrate on one person in the family member because I love them so much, but there are other people that's ailing out there. Yes. If you know that they're going to be transitioning over to glory real soon, but you have a healthy person that needs someone to minister to them, then we've got to go and do what God told us to do. Amen. We can't wait around because if we're sitting around waiting around to the next person transition to heaven, my Bible tells me that no man knows the day nor the hour that the Son of Man will come. Yeah. Yeah. So we sit around waiting and waiting for that person to transition to heaven, but someone is suffering down in jungle that God has told us to minister to, Come but we did that. not minister to that person. Jesus. And when the demise come to that person because we didn't do what God asked us to do, then we'll be held accountable. Yes. I would have liked to been there, mm, mm, mm. but I just couldn't make it. I had a family member that was sick and I couldn't come. Mm. We didn't know if he was going to leave this world or whether he was going to be here. Right. But the demise of the person that God asked you to minister to, God will take care of the sick person at home. Right. God will send an angel your way to make sure that that person is taken care of. Yes. Sickness is not a sickness, but only when Jesus comes. Uh -huh. Will the healing take place? Yeah. We can sit by the bed all night long, but we are not going to heal anybody. Come on! All we can do is sit there, pray to the master, uh -huh. ask him to heal our loved one. Yes, Lord, I'm sitting here waiting on you, but we got to understand that there are sick people spiritually yeah. that God needs us to go and minister to. Yeah. It might be in jungle. It might be in power. It might be in union. But if God put them in your spirit, mm -hmm. you go and do what God told you to do. Yes. Your family member will be all right. That's right. If I've got a family member and I know that they're in Christ, yes. then what you got to worry about? That's right. When your family member sitting there sick and, and, and you've done all that you can do, you say, Lord, I've done all that I can do. And all that we can do is sit there. Maybe bring them a bowl of soup. Mm -hmm. Maybe bring them a drink of water. Uh -huh. Maybe put their pills in their hand. Right. But it's not going to determine whether they live or whether they die. That's right. Don't let nothing turn you around. Uh -huh. If you're going to follow where Jesus told you to go. That's right. That's the right. last one came up and he told Jesus. Jesus told him that if you put your hand to the plow, and you look back, anybody in here that's a father to know, you put your eye on the destination, and you hook up your plow or your mule, whatever you use it, and you head for that destination. If God called you, and I told my family that I'm going, you know when God sent you. You can tell them I'm at home. God has given 
an opportunity to have cell phones. Uh -huh. You can call them on the wire uh -huh. and say, I got something to do. But when God puts something in front of you and you put your hand to the block uh -huh. and you start plowing a straight road uh -huh. and you know your family members watching you, where are you going? You take your eyes off the prize and you look back. Uh -huh. When you look back, you see that the road is not straight like it's supposed to be. So when you sow the beans, you're going to have part of a straight road, and then you're going to have a hook in your beans. That means that you're going on road. That means that you don't have a straight line. That's right. And you're going to follow Jesus. Uh -huh. You got to follow a straight line. My Bible tells me, yeah. brethren, I do not count myself apprehended. But those things, the work thing that I do, do. Those yeah. things is in the past. I leave them in the past. Come on. I look forward to what this promise me. Yeah. I set my eyes toward the mark. Yeah. But the prize of the high calling. Yeah. Who is Christ Jesus? Yeah. Get yourself ready. Yeah. To follow Jesus. Yeah. If you want to commit to Jesus, commit to Jesus. Yeah. You're not going to commit to follow Jesus. Don't put your hand to the plow. Come on. Get yourself ready. Yeah. To lead family members to Christ. Yeah. Get yourself ready. Yeah. To lead loved ones to Christ. Yeah. Get yourself ready. Yeah. To lead co workers to Christ. Get yourself ready. Which is the hardest one? To help lead your enemies to Christ. That's right. Yeah. One thing that I'm here to tell you. Yeah. Do you think everybody loves you? Let me let you in on a secret. <laughs> they don't. Everybody don't love you. Everybody don't love you. That's right. Everybody don't know God. That's right. Everybody don't know God. That's it. But the Bible tells us that whether you think it's evil to serve the Lord, and when I get to this part of it, you're going to know where I'm going. Choose ye this day. Yes. Who you will serve. Yes. Will you serve other gods like your father did on the other side of the river? My God. Or will you serve the Amorites in whose land that you dwell? No. But as for me and my family, we going to serve the Lord. Let's go. 
man, it ain't nothing against you, man. But every time you hear somebody say something, it's mama. Mama. When you see the professional athletes on TV, they score a touchdown. You see them on the sideline. Hey, mama. Mm -hmm. We know that we love our mama. Mm -hmm. But don't let mama turn you around. That's right. Mama is a same person. And mama ain't gonna be in your home. That's right. But if God tell you to go to the right, if mama tell you to go to the left,